Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to install Synology DSM-7 onto my NAS. Synology DSM-7 was released June 29th, but I have a DS1621XS Plus, and it wasn't a release candidate at the time. So what we're going to do, we're going to download DSM-7, put it onto my NAS, take a look at the user interface and some of the new settings with it. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks, and we have a Discord server, which I'll put a link in the description below. So before we install DSM-7, let's take a look at some of the release notes. We're not going to go through all these release notes, but we'll go through some of the important ones. So DSM 7.0.1 will restart your Synology NAS. And then after installing to DSM-7, we won't be able to downgrade to any previous versions. Before upgrading, our Synology NAS should be running DSM 6.2 or above. And we need to reserve some time for this to update. On the release notes, it says it could take between 10 to 20 minutes, while package updates could take up to an hour. Also under line 8, this is going to show us all the compatible models for DSM-7. So you want to make sure that your model is there. Now let's download DSM-7 and I'll put a link to this website below. We just need to click on download now. And then it says install it on your NAS. We're gonna press download now. We're gonna select our product type, which mine is a NAS. And then we're gonna select your Synology product. Here we could type in our product. Mine is the DS1621XS+. Now very important, we wanna choose the correct operating system. We could see OS version, this will show DSM 6.2, but we wanna switch it to DSM-7 and then we could press download. With the file now installed, we need to put it onto our Synology NAS. So we'll go to control panel, and then we'll look for the update and restore. Under the update and restore, it's gonna show us the current model that we're running, and we could push out a manual DSM update. Then we need to select the file path where we downloaded DSM-7. I'm gonna to browse to my desktop, and then we could see this PAT file. We'll open up the PAT file and press OK. Now it pops up with an update notice. Before you continue, make sure to read through the important changes that will take place. It's telling us about the time between 20 and 40 minutes on here. And then it's showing us what packages will be automatically updated. And then it says, along with the update, Quick Connect will be updated to ensure connection security with an SSL certificate. This requires passing your Quick Connect domain to the certificate authority Let's Encrypt and then you could read about the privacy statement. And then it tells us about the Synology packages. So PhotoStation will be upgraded to Synology Photo, and then we have our third-party packages. I'm gonna click I understand and agree to the update system, and then we'll press next. The installation may take 20 to 40 minutes to finish. Please do not shut down the system during the update. Once the update is completed, the system may restart all the services and packages. Do you wanna continue? And we'll press yes. And now it's beginning to update. So we'll be back with DSM-7. Okay, and the upgrade has completed, but before we log in, let's take a look at some of the features. We're not gonna read all of this, and this is from androidcentral.com, and I'll post this in the description below as well. And under storage, we have a new revision of storage manager. So added visuals of Synology NAS models with their drive slots, expansion units, and built-in M2 slots to help users view drive status. There's also a massive list of things under here. We're not going to read all of those. And then we have new features under SSD cache. Added the ability to create and remove SSD cache without interrupting the system service. Under resource monitor, it's revamped the display of recorded performance metrics with the finer granularity of data points and the ability to focus on certain time points. And then file system and file services. It supports enabling and disabling file compression for shared folders created on DSM-7. Under user management, it's enhanced the password policy. Password must exclude username and description, include both uppercase and lowercase letters, as well as numerical digits. The minimum password length is eight characters, which is great. We have domain LDAP integration. We have added security, so added the ability to block USB and console ports. And then we have user experience. So enhanced user experience for DSM first time installation in Synology account related service setup. Example, Quick Connect. Also in this write-up is the enclosures that are eligible for DSM-7. So now let's go ahead and log in to my Synology NAS. And this is the logon page for DSM-7. We have our username and then we press next to get to our password. And then we have to put in our 2FA if you have it enabled. 
So I'm going to do that and then we'll get into the dashboard. Okay, and now we're prompted with what's new in DSM-7. We've already talked a little bit about it, but more versatile than ever before. See how DSM makes data management simpler and more secure, and then you could click learn more. It's streamlined and more intuitive, easier management and maintenance, and faster and more secure. We'll press start. Explore new services available with Synology accounts. So we have Active Insight, Configuration Backup, and Secure Sign-In Service. I'm going to skip that for now, but we will look at that in a future video. And then it says, would you like to reconsider? You're about to miss out on many awesome features. It says, note, if you skip for the time being, you can configure them later in the control panel. We'll press no thanks to skip. And then it's asking us if we want to share our device analytics. I'll press no thanks. In the right-hand corner, it says, take a quick tour everything to help you get started on your way and we'll press go. So under DSM help, we could click on a topic to learn what DSM has to offer. Showing us stay ahead of the problem. So it has system monitoring, active insight monitor, your CPU memory usage and disk utilization. We could access our NAS from anywhere. So access your NAS over the internet quickly and securely, even when you're away from your NAS. Typically I set up a VPN into my network to access it, but we will do quick connect in a later video. We have enhanced security, so easily fend off malicious attacks with these security enhancement features. We have different sign-in methods, so we have two-factor authentication, and then we have firewall settings and security scans. Store and manage data, so you could upload and manage files effortlessly regardless of your computer operating system. So we could create shared folders, manage files with file station, access through SMB, and then access files through AFP. We could back up our data using Synology Drive Server, which, which we already did in a previous video. We have mobile and then we have public cloud. And then we have protect your data. Step up your data protection game with these useful tools. So we have a complete NAS backup and then we have a rapid folder backup. So as you can see, the dashboard looks quite a bit different and I actually really like it. It kind of looks more like a Windows machine. At the top left, we have our package center and then we have our main menu. I also have storage manager on my dashboard. So we'll click on that and we could see that it's showing us all our drives and the drives are healthy, which is really cool. We could also see that I have one volume and we have about a terabyte used out of 17.4 terabytes. So that's it for this video. That was the upgrade to DSM-7. In the next video, we'll take a look at Synology Photos. And after that, we'll probably take a look at the Virtual Machine Manager. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.